Hello, so today we're going to take a look at PC hardware and specifically this HP T5710 thin client. And the reason we're looking at it is because although it was manufactured in 2004, it's actually super useful for DOS and Windows 98 gaming. It's got a lot of tricks up its sleeve and a lot of features that are really good for that era. First looking at the, the connectivity options on the back here, we have an Ethernet jack, we have four USB 2.0 ports and you can boot from these two. We have microphone and headphone jacks and the PC speaker actually gets routed through this headphone jack which is, is useful. We have a single PS2 connector which can be used for mouse or keyboard. We have a 12 volt barrel power jack. We have standard 15 pin VGA connector. 9 pin serial and a DB25 parallel port. So nothing fancy here but it is really nice to have the legacy serial and power connectors next to more modern USB. This gives us a lot of options. To get the case open first we undo these two thumb screws to remove the vertical stand. Next, we remove these two black screws holding the case in place. We can pop the case off like this. And once we're inside, we need to remove these two inner screws. Lifting the lid, the first thing we need to be careful for is the speaker cable which connects across here. This speaker is actually super powerful and it emits both the sound blaster audio and PC speaker audio. You can leave it disconnected if you want but I think it's pretty useful. Looking inside the case we have 256 megabytes of PC2700 DDR memory in SODIMM format. It's actually really easy to still get hold of this and you can upgrade this to one gigabyte pretty cheaply. We've got the CPU, which is an 800 megahertz transmitter Crusoe processor. And then underneath here, we have the Radeon 7000M graphics. This is actually the first generation Radeon and it's, it's pretty good for a machine like this. Over here, we have the VIA VT8231 Southbridge chipset and this is useful because it has built-in sound blast audio giving us audio support in DOS games. In the corner here we have storage. So this originally came with a 256 megabyte flash module. I've upgraded to two gigabytes. Underneath here is just a standard IDE connector so you could remove this you could replace it with a IDE to compact flash adapter or something similar. Lastly, and this is the interesting find, we have a PCI slot. So this is going to give us a lot of upgrade options for things like sound cards or video cards, and I'd love to explore this later. To put the case back on, just the reverse. We snap the inner case in place. Put these two holding screws back in place. Replace the outer cover and fasten these two black screws on the back. And then lastly, we replace the vertical stand and reattach the thumb screws. That's it. The best OS choice here is Windows 98, which gives you native access to DOS and the Windows 98 game catalog. Installing is relatively easy. Boot from USB and copy the Windows 98 CD contents to the internal storage. Then launch Windows Setup. Follow all the regular setup steps. Windows will install relatively quickly. 
Once Windows loads, you'll need to install the drivers. Start with this IDE hotfix. You'll need this before you can properly install the via chipset drivers. Then install the chipset drivers. And after this, you can install in any order. We'll do the graphics and then the sound. Ah, the Windows 98 nostalgia hit. It sounds great. First, let's try some Windows 98 gaming. To start, we need DirectX. We'll use version 7.0a. Really, this is the most stable version for Windows 98 and supports almost the entire catalog. Windows 98 does support up to DirectX 9, but the stability is worse and we don't get much extra for it. So we'll stick with 7. With DirectX installed, let's try out the classic DirectX Spinny Cube demo. looks very smooth. Okay, let's try a game. We have Radeon 7000 graphics on this machine. This is the first generation Radeon GPU and ATI's competitor to NVIDIA's GeForce and the 3DFX Voodoo 5 line. This is plenty of horsepower for Windows 98 gaming and you can see the graphics are super smooth. In fact, incoming's running a little fast here. Dropping back to DOS, let's try out some DOS games. To enable DOS audio, we need to load a couple of software tools. These enable the chipset audio and then sit in memory, registering interrupts that the DOS games can use to playback audio. First, we set the blaster variable to guide the system on how to configure the, the chipset audio. Next, we load via SB CFG, which enables the Sound Blaster audio. Don't forget to load high. This keeps the program out of DOS conventional memory space and prevents memory issues. Lastly, we need FM audio. So we load via FM TSR to enable the AdLib compatible music support. With these enabled, let's go for a test drive. It has to be Doom.
For chipset audio, the experience is really good. Generally, everything sounds like it should do, and the compatibility is excellent. I'll include a selection of games after so you can listen for yourself. To wrap everything up, this is a great mini PC with some tricks that make it excellent for DOS gaming. We have built-in sound blaster and ad-lib audio. The PC speaker gets routed through the headphone jack, which is a nice touch. It has a mix of new and old ports with USB 2.0 alongside traditional serial and parallel ports. On the Windows side, the system can boot from USB, which makes OS installation much easier. And it can also use the USB ports for gamepads. The Radeon 7000 graphics are surprisingly capable, and we can always drop something even more powerful into the expansion slot, something for a future video maybe. You can pick these up for relatively cheap. I paid about $40 on eBay, plus another $7 for the 2GB flash module, which I think is a great price compared to how much other retro hardware costs. Thanks for tuning in. I'll leave you with some DOS classics. Enjoy!
Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride.
only one more to go! Hey, it's a new lap record! It must be real hard being this good. Thank <laughs> you. 